But I realize that uh, that might not seem as relevant to you as it uh, does to me. And so I, I modified uh, the title a little bit, but still basically the same subject. And the title for the message tonight is, Are You Hot or Cold for Christ? Hot or cold for Christ? And what do I mean by that? I mean, the temperature of your love for Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to say that we are hot, that our temperature for the love of Jesus is hot. Uh, but you know, that can be measured. Uh, we're talking about uh, finding out how what the temperature of a person is, we can take a thermometer and measure the temperature. And we can do the same uh, for our love for Christ. And there's certain uh, things that are important for us to look at. And one of the things I know that uh, the Lord does not want us to be cold mm -hmm. and the Lord does not want us to be warm because yeah, uh, Revelation 3, 16, I believe it is, says that he will spew us out of his mouth or uh, vomit us out of his mouth. He's not happy with people that are warm because they're neither cold nor hot. What he wants are all Christians to be hot. Their temperature of love, to have passionate love. And really, that's the only thing that is going to cause us to carry on in this life to, all the way to the point that we end well in this life. And that's really an important part of this message. We want to end our lives well, and we've got to make steps today. How can we end our life well if we're, we've got to finish the course? We've got to know that we're on a course, and we have to finish that course. So it's not, not good enough to start it and then stop halfway. And I believe there's a lot of people, a lot of good Christians that stop halfway on their course that God lays out for them and they lay down and give up and do not finish the course. So we're really going to be talking about that concept tonight, but the way to measure, we need to be measuring it day by day as we go along mm -hmm. and not just wait till the end and then realize we came up short. And so this is a preparation message uh, to prepare all of us uh, to run a good race. Mm -hmm. if Paul said, uh, I have, uh, I fought a good fight. fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. And uh, we're going to start. This is our basic text here. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read it uh, from Timothy. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 9, out of the New American Standard. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. In the future, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to those, all those who have loved his appearing. Okay, so that says loved his appearing. That talks about love. Now, the New International Version says there are people longing for his appearing. I mean, that means amen. we're longing for his return. That's right. And that is the thing that motivates us to stay on course, to fight the fight of faith, to finish our course, and to uh, keep the faith. That is the motivating factor that we're looking for something. We're looking mm -hmm. for his return. And when he returns, we're going to receive a glorified body. We're going to, our body is going to be transformed. And the only way that we will make it to that point is if we're passionately longing for his return. Amen. A, a vast majority of people are not. They're, they're just existing. They're just getting by from mm -hmm. day to day. But in order for us to make it and, and to finish our course, to finish our race, God has laid out a race for us, and the course is well laid out, and we need to find out where that course is and follow that course. And, and he said there's really two, in this end of this passage that she just read, there are really two groups of people. Those that, and these are Christians. They're all Christians. They're all 
They all love the Lord. But there are two types of Christians. There are those that are running the race and they're going to win the Olympic gold medal. Hallelujah. And those who are not going to win the Olympic gold medal. The people who are going to win the Olympic gold medal, it says they get a crown of righteousness. Mm. Now, this is not a diadem that the king gets. This is a, a crown. It's, a, it's like a laurel in Olympic days uh, uh, when Paul uh, wrote this letter. It was a laurel wreath put upon them uh, today the, in the Olympic Games. Uh, they get uh, gold medals. So this is not the crown of a king, but it's the, it's the uh, designation of the winner of a race. Mm -hmm. uh, you, recognition. Recognition that you've run in the race, you run well, you finished, you have gotten the prize. And that's what this is about. And we need to be doing it on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, we can't just wait. That's what many people do. They just wait until things get tough, until there's uh, problems with their body, there's problems uh, in their family, and there's problems with their life. And so they lay down on the race course and they give up. Mm. I don't want any of you, and I don't want Sherry, and I don't want me to get midway in the race, lay down on the race course and give up. This is mm -hmm. this message is about continuing on until we get the full prize. And the full prize is Jesus Christ coming back. And we have to be longing for his return. The people who are not longing for his return, I'm talking about passionate love for Jesus Christ. I mean, and it is passionately loving Jesus Christ every day. That's the only way you'll ever make it to the finish line. If you get to the point where your love is warm Live or warm. you're warm or your uh, love is cold, you won't make it to the end. You've got to have fiery, hot love for Jesus Christ uh, every day of your life. Uh, get up and, and praise him and worship him uh, and, and you'll make it to the end. Yeah, You'll I, make it to the end. Sure, I, have, I have a scripture uh, that says that in the last days, uh, there will be many whose love has waxed cold. Okay. Many. Th those are Christians. Yeah. yeah. Th those are not unbelievers. Those are Christians. Their love right. has waxed, waxed cold. cold. Now, what, what's, what's the Lord going to do? He's going to spit them out of his mouth. Right. Well, and they're not going to finish the race. The race is laid out before them, but they will not finish it. So what I want you to know is this is the way that you stay fiery hot for the Lord. You love him, love him every day, and that you are longing for his return, longing for his appearing. And if you don't have that one motivation, you will stop one day on the racetrack you will lay down and you will give up. I've seen it happen over and over again. Yes. And it's so sad. It's so tragic. And you've got to prepare. And so in this race I'm talking about, there are basically three things uh, that we need to do. I've just got it down to a very simple message. Uh, and uh, glory to God. The first mm -hmm. one is to live a life of holiness. Mm. Number oh, one. Yeah. If you have a longing to be with Jesus, if you love him, if you're passionately in love with him, you will want to live a holy life. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read a verse here. Second Peter. Yes. Second Peter chapter three, verses 11 through 14. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Oh, okay. So what this is saying, I'm just getting, going to get it fit mm -hmm. it into context. The world's going to pass away. Heaven's going to pass away. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And and if all that at his return, at Jesus' return, and if all is it, of that is going to happen, then how should we behave? Because we are looking for that day that he will come back. Now, it just doesn't bother us as bad when he comes back. 
because we're looking for the new kingdom. We're looking Hallelujah. for the Jesus new Jerusalem. ruling and Amen. reigning. Glory to God. So it, it, this question asks, when this time comes, when he returns, and the old heaven and the old uh, earth pass away, what is our conduct to be? And that's the same conduct we are to be because we are longing, we're passionately longing for his return. So, so how should we behave? With okay. holiness. Okay. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt in, with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Oh, hallelujah. So what are we supposed to do? Realizing that we love him we love him every day of our life passionately mm. and that we're passionately longing for his return. We're supposed to live holy and godly life. That means we're to deny, uh, to deny uh, the, the worldly kinds of pleasures, deny. Mm -hmm. And this was another one that's in, in another verse, but it said, deny worrying. Don't worry. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you know why you don't worry? Hallelujah. <laughs> if you're passionately loving him, you know the things of this world are going to pass away. You, you've got, mm -hmm. a, you've got a, a bright future mm -hmm. if you are passionately loving the Lord. This is, this is an encouraging message for all of us to stay close to the love to the Lord and stay passionate and stay fiery hot for him. Amen. You know, when I think about the word passion, I think about a person who is passionately in love with, with another person. Uh, they, they long to be with that person. They long to fellowship with that person and be with that person, talk with that person, commune with that person. Also, they have a, a just a desire uh, to to think about them, uh, if they're, that other person is in their thoughts and in their, in their mind. And, you know, it says, you know, finally, brethren, let, let these, um, uh, things, what is it? Um, uh, uh, let these thoughts be, be what things that are pure. Think on these oh, things. Yeah. Finally, brethren, think on these things, things that are lovely and pure and holy and of good report. And, and when you do that, then then you're you're bringing forth that passion for the Lord. Uh, it's something that we can do every single day, and that is to to long to commune and fellowship with the Lord. And and we can do that. Uh, we can do that through singing. We can do that through studying our our Word. We can do that through fellowshipping with with other people. We we long to see your faces. Uh, we long to to um, just you know be together and to talk about the Lord. Uh, you know, I've got individuals that I love to uh, talk with because we just talk about the Lord uh, and we talk about the Scriptures and we 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 give our testimony about what God has done in our life and and all of those things are bring passion. They, it brings the passion up. And it, it sets us on fire. And uh, and so this is something that um, that we all need to be doing. Okay. So I've got three points. The first one is to live a holy life, a holy and a godly life, and shun unrighteousness. Number two point is to do righteous acts, oh, righteous deeds. Amen. Good deeds. Now, the way we do that are to complete our assignments. Woo, hallelujah. So if you wanted to, to uh, just give this a title, number two is complete your assignments mm -hmm. from God. See, we don't mm -hmm. have to decide what we're going to do. What we have to do is find out what God has assigned us to do. Uh, and then because do in it. Ephesians, mm -hmm. Because in Ephesians, it says we are his workmanship. We are his masterpiece. And he has prepared good works for us from the beginning, mm -hmm. from the very beginning. So it's already out there. Uh, it, it's already laid out. God has identified what he wants you to do. And so you have to discover what, what he wants you to do. And, and then you go about and do it. 
Now, if you're really excited about his return, uh, I'm going to let Sherry read this uh, passage out of Revelation, and it talks about righteous acts, mm. and, and it's about uh, the bride that's looking for Christ's return. And that's what motivates this uh, uh, being fiery hot in the Lord is that uh, motivation. And so read that, uh, Sherry. It's Revelation 19, okay. verses 7 and 8. Let's rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him because the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has prepared herself. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Okay, so let's think about this. If you're loving his appearing, if you're loving his return and his appearing, then you need to be dressed uh, with your fine linen garments mm -hmm. for the wedding feast. You know, uh, Jesus said there were people that went into the wedding feast and they didn't have on their wedding clothes and they were thrown out. No, we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get to the point at the end of the road and uh, we don't have our uh, wedding garments finished. And, and what are our wedding garments? Well, they are the righteous acts that you do over your lifetime. Amen. And every righteous act that you do creates a thread a royal thread, a righteous thread to go into your righteous garment. And, and who prepares the garment? You prepare the garment. Oh, hallelujah. The righteous garment to be, to meet Jesus mm, that's uh, good. for his return. Mm. And uh, a, a lot of times people get to the point uh, where they just want to lay down and say, well, I've had a good life and it's getting difficult and I'm suffering i'm suffering in my body i'm suffering mm -hmm. in my relationship so i want to give up well i'll tell you a story about a woman yeah a and uh, she had uh, uh she decided that was her she was an older lady and she was ready uh to go home and be uh with the lord and so she just said uh, told the lord she was coming home yeah and uh and the lord appeared to her and said but your garment is not finished see it's not your decision when to go home. So, so mm -hmm. you think, well, my going to eternity is the goal. No, the goal for you to go on to eternity is not the goal. The goal is for, for you, you to, to, to long for uh, the appearing of Jesus Christ and you finish your race. That is the goal. And who knows the assignments that you have and what is undone, only the Lord can reveal that to you by his spirit. And so you don't want to get to the wedding garment, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to the wedding feast and have half a garment on. Oh, the Lord will look at you and say, oh, take her away, take him away. What, what? No, you've got to be fully clothed. And, and how are you going to get fully clothed? By doing righteous acts mm, that's good. day that's good. by day. Uh, see, there was a time that Sherry had to uh, uh, face some very difficult life and death kinds of things. And she may have considered uh, uh, going on, but the Lord appeared to her and said, you are not your own. I bought you with a price. It's not your decision when to lay down on the race course mm -hmm. and give mm -hmm. up. It's not, that's not your decision. That's right. Because you think, you think eternity is the goal. Eternity is not the goal. His return is your goal, is your goal. His return, uh, you're uh, receiving a glorified body, being with Hallelujah. him, him. That's your goal to finish the course. See, G see Paul finished the course. Yeah. Now, why did he finish the course? Because he had... Every day he'd been working on that course and he'd been working on his wedding garments and he'd been doing righteous acts and, and he was living a godly life and glory to God. And he made it. He made it to the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He finished, Hallelujah. He finished because he didn't have a goal on laying down when the things got tough. He could easily uh, lay down uh, when, when he went before Nero 
Nero was one of the most evil uh, emperors of all time, and, and, and he was just killing people for the joy of killing people and, and for the pleasure of killing people. And uh, no doubt uh, when Paul uh, was going to appear before Nero that he was going to die. There was no doubt about it. He was going to die because he's standing before the ungodly, unjust judge, and, and he's going to be condemned to death. He could have easily given up and said, I'm not going to go on. But Paul said, I'm finishing my course. Now, how could he do it? He stayed red hot, fiery hot. He stayed fiery hot his lifetime. Even when he wasn't serving the Lord, boy, he was hot. He was still Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when, he, when he met the Lord on the road to Damascus, he became passionately uh, loving God. Uh, and so what are we doing today? Well, we're measuring our temperature, Hallelujah. the temperature of our love. And there's three things that will stir a fire in your love. The first one, you have enough fire in you because you'll be wanting to do godly deeds. You want to be living a holy lifestyle. You'll be wanting to give righteous deeds, do mm -hmm. righteous deeds. Now, what God has assigned me is not what he's assigned you. And what God has assigned Sherry is not what he's assigned you. Mm -hmm. We all have our assignments. This is from Ephesians 3. We have to find our assignments. Now, you are his workmanship, and he has decided what he wants you to do, and you have to find it. And one of the ways you find it is to be in among godly people who can help counsel you and give you direction, mm -hmm. who can give you prophetic words. All of that's important for you to find your assignments, and you've got to hang on to those assignments and do them. And every time you finish a righteous act, you you have a thread of righteousness Hallelujah. and that thread will go into your garment and you'll make a beautiful garment and, and the Lord will be well pleased with you and he'll welcome you into the marriage uh, feast and the marriage ceremony and say, well done, thou good and, and faithful, faithful servant. servant. Amen. Well Amen. done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you've got to stay hot. You've got to stay hot now. You need to be hot now for him living a holy lifestyle hallelujah, oh, hallelujah hallelujah you know i think about what apostle paul said <laughs> it's better for me to to go but it's better for you that i stay and so paul was not thinking about himself he wanted to finish his course but he also wanted to finish his assignments and there were other people and there, I'm going to say this to you. There are people waiting on the other side of your obedience. Do you hear me? There are people that are waiting on the other side of your obedience. They're waiting for you to witness to them. They're waiting for you to bring healing to them. They're waiting for you to bring grace and mercy and hope to them so there are people waiting on the other side of your obedience and that's why paul could not lay down on the race course and he said i'm i, I finished my assignments i'm finished my course and now i'm ready to go and be with you lord hallelujah hallelujah and that's because that passion was there uh, that that pro that propelled him forward, that kept him going, that gave him strength uh, to to go on. Uh, I don't believe that the Apostle Paul uh, had burnout. You know, there are a lot of ministers out there today uh, that that I talk with, and they'll call me and and will you pray for me because I just feel down today, and I feel like I want to give up today, and I'm so frustrated today, and. And other thing, other comments they make to me, and and is that they've lost that that heat, that fire, fire that Brother Fred was talking about. But I don't believe the Apostle Paul ever lost his passion and his fire and his heat 
for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I believe that every day he did those righteous deeds. And, um, and, and I just want to say to, to Brother Fred that I never thought about the wedding garment uh, that, that, we are, that we are making our own wedding garment by the righteous acts that we do and the righteous deed, deeds that we do and the obedience that we have for the Lord. Um, he has something for every one of you to do. And, uh, and so I feel like we need to be prepared to, to do what he tells us to do. And like he told me, you're not your own. Your life is not your own. Once you come into the kingdom, your life has been given over to Jesus. And so it's not your own. You can't do just any old thing. You can't do uh, what, what you want to do and then not do what you don't want to do. Uh, this is, uh, and he said, you know, you're not, your life is not your own. I purchased you with my blood. And, and so that's when he told me to pour out the, the sleeping pills and pour out my water and to go home and to do what he told me to do. And that was, that was years ago. Uh, and I've been trying to do what, what he wants me to do each day. That was how long ago? It was over 20 years ago. Okay. Okay. Over 20 years ago. Over 25. Yeah, about 25 years ago. And, uh, and so um, this is something, you know, we, we've lost so many wonderful Christian friends that have just given up. They, they've just, they, you know, their, their bodies were tired and, and they just, they stopped fighting. And, and did they go on to be with Jesus? Yes, they did. They, they were Christians. They were born again but they aborted their life on they, this earth right because they didn't finish when god told them to finish yeah they finished when they gave up when they laid down and gave up when we can't do that you right god, right you, you, when you think that eternity is your goal that's okay but that's not your goal your hope is not in getting to to heaven you you've already got that that it's no longer hope you, you've already got that locked up. You're going to heaven when you finish here. That's mm -hmm. not hope. Hope is something you don't have. Hope oh. is for his return. Hallelujah. Hope is looking for oh, his return da, 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 or longing da, 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 for da, 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 his return. That's what hope is. That's da, 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 your hope. And that's the reason that the so many Christians lay down because they have no hope. They already have heaven locked up, but they don't have his return and they don't long for his return that's the difference that's mm -hmm. why you, they move on on the race course because they have a oh, hope yeah. of yeah. his return if all you're looking for is eternity just go ahead and go you can go today but that's not why you're on the earth yeah, that's you're right. not on the earth just to go to heaven you're on the earth to do god's will Amen. to bring forth his kingdom on this earth hallelujah glory to god hallelujah you've got to be fiery hot with your love for the lord jesus christ and that's an everyday process that's loving him today Amen. and Amen. loving him tomorrow and loving his re re appearing loving his appearing okay. that is the only thing that will motivate you that you know you have hope you know paul wrote a statement said uh, Christians are of all people most miserable if they don't have hope. Woo, they don't man, have man, hope. Man. It, thousands and millions of Christians that don't have hope because they're just looking for a ticket to heaven and a way to get to heaven. Yeah. And that is mm -hmm. not your mm -hmm. hope. Your hope is in his return and you're meeting him and you're receiving a glorified body and being Hallelujah. like Jesus. Hallelujah. That's your hope. Yes, and that amen. will keep you Hallelujah. on fire Hallelujah. and on the race, race course and continuing on until he comes.
Right. He said, so occupy that. until I come. That's right. So, you That's know, right. many people are not occupying. They're laying down on the race course and they're giving up and they don't have hope for the future Amen. because hope Amen. is seeing his return. Hallelujah. Hope is participating in his return. Hope is having your wedding garment ready for his return. Let me ask you this question. You can ponder it. How far along are you on your wedding garment? Mm, are you 10 percent mm, oh wow are you 20 percent wow are you 80 percent mm, are you 90 99 mm. how oh, far along oh, yeah. how many people are 100 percent i I, mm. I don't know that we're 100 percent yet on our wedding garment because it's every thread mm, beautiful freddie comes from a righteous act mm. a righteous act and what's a righteous act what's good in the will of the father that's right Woo! glory that's right and, and and every thread you get you you you're weaving that garment that wedding garment so that you can go there to the marriage feast and you're not going to stop and you're not going to quit and you're not going to give up if you're wearing if you're wearing your wedding garment and you're, Hallelujah. you're, you're, your, ready. you're, you're ready. finishing you're finishing that wedding garment oh i just need a little bit more on my sleeve here i just need a little bit more on my sleeve and my wedding garments go see you're you're, you're you're going to be fervently in love with the lord you can want getting your, your wedding, wedding garment, garment ready Hallelujah. for him Hallelujah. glory to god but i've only covered two points you know there oh are, there's three points. there's three points <laughs> Hallelujah. The first one is to live a holy and godly life. Amen. To stay hot. To stay fiery hot for your love for mm -hmm. the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The second one is righteous acts. Because you've got to have that mm -hmm. garment. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I see all of you just looking beautiful, so beautiful and prepared for Amen. the Lord. Amen. For the Lord uh, at the wedding feast. You've got to have that garment. You, you don't want any thread missing. You, you don't want a single thread missing. You want that garment mm -hmm. to be beautiful. You want it to be beautiful. But there's a third thing that will keep you fiery hot. Keep your love fiery hot. Keep you from giving up and just going on to heaven. Oh, it, it, mm. and that is a vibrant prayer life. Oh, I mean. A vibrant Amen. prayer life. Amen. Now, now there's this passage that Jesus talks about his return. Uh, and I believe it's Luke 11, uh, and it talks first about his return, and then it says, uh, uh, and Sherry's going to read the later, the latter verses, and those latter verses say that we need to be sober and alert, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and have a vibrant prayer life. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Sherry to read these verses. Okay, uh, Luke. Luke 21. Luke 21. Uh huh. Verses 34 through 36. But be on your guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with overindulgence and drunkenness and the worries of this life. Okay, this is the, this is the verse I referred to a while ago. Yeah. Overindulgence. You don't, you don't want to get involved with this stuff and that stuff and that stuff. And what's the other one? Mm -hmm. Say, what's the second one after overindulgence? Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Well, you don't want to get involved in drunk. And then third. And you'd say, oh, yeah. no, I'm not going to get drunk. Okay. The, I, I know you're not going to get drunk. But let's look at the three. And the worries of this life. Ooh, worry. <laughs> he said, you've got to avoid worry. You, you know, you're not supposed to worry. And why do we worry? See, the reason we worry, we're so caught up in our problems and the things on this earth. And if we're fiery hot in love with Jesus, we're going to be looking for him. For his return, we're going to be looking at him, not mm -hmm. at our problems. Mm -hmm. See, when we are looking at and engrossed in our problems, that's all we see. That's all we have. That's right. When we lift up our eyes and we look into Jesus, we see something greater, much greater. And all of these worldly things fall away. And that's why we're not supposed to worry because we're supposed to keep our mm -hmm. eyes on Jesus. Okay, go ahead and keep reading. Mm -hmm. And that this day will not come on you suddenly like a trap. What's, that, what's, that, what's that day? It's the day of the oh, Lord's return. return. Hallelujah. You don't want to be trapped and not ready for his return. We've got to be ready. We've got to be on fire for him. You can't say, oh, the Lord is here. 
I, I better go get me a match and sit on a match. No. <laughs> you, you, there's three ways that you can stay hot for the Lord. And, and, the, and the first one is to live a holy and godly life every day. Uh -huh. Or do righteous acts every day. And that's mm -hmm. building that garment. That's creating that garment. And, and now the third is to have a vibrant prayer life every day. You might say, well, I just haven't had prayer time to pray this month. Whoa, you're not hot. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. you're not hot. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're just warm, he's going to vomit you out of his mouth. You're not hot if you don't pray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, keep praying. Verse 35. Pray. For it will come upon all who's who live on the face of all the earth, but stay alert at all times, praying that you will have strength to escape all these things that are going going to take place and to stand before the son of man. Oh, you've got to pray so that you can avoid all the evil and you can stand before Jesus. Amen. Woo! Amen. Hey, do you I want told to... somebody today, I said, I, I thank the Lord every single day for baptizing me in the Holy Ghost and fire and that I can pray in tongues and I can communicate with the father. Otherwise, I would go on. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So you need to know where you stand, who you can stand before. You don't want to be have everything moving toward Jesus coming and you and you and you want to walk up there to him and you can't stand before him. The only way you can stand mm -hmm. before him is to have a vibrant prayer life. Amen. It's Amen. got it's got to be created today. You, you don't develop that vibrant prayer life that's going to bring you into his presence, usher you into his presence. Mm -hmm. You're not going to start that in 10 years. You're not going to start, oh, if, oh, 30 years, I'll be able, I'll start praying in 30 years. No, if you're going to stand in his presence, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're passionately in love with Jesus, you'll pray today. Amen. Oh, Amen. You'll make, make room, make, make time to pray. Hallelujah. Take, hey, Sherry has a song she yeah. wrote. If uh, she remembers any of it. Take time to pray. Reach out and touch the Father. Take time to pray. And you will hear him say, Blessed are ye, my child. For I have heard your cry. Take time to pray. Take time to pray. Hallelujah. I love that song. I love that song. And then God gave her that song, and there's a lot more to it. But I, I caught her uh, now just to ask her to do it. And I, I'm still blessed by it every time I hear her sing it. Amen. And I want to say thank you for, for being here with us today. I, I've just... Uh, I, You've poured I, out your heart. I've, I've stirred up some things, and, and I, I've tried to uh, give you some enlightenment on some things that we what we need to be doing now and when what when mm -hmm. we do these things now three things there wasn't a lot of things it's mm -hmm. just three things if we do those three things now we'll continue to be on fire for god and we will be ready for his return ready be ready for his return thank you for being here thank you jesus See, thank she you has jesus something to say. you know i go back to again what paul said it's better he said, I, it's better for me to go on, but it's better for you that I stay. And so as you think about the three things that Brother Fred is, has brought to us tonight, you know, think about those, those individuals that need to hear from you. They need to hear your testimony. They need to hear how good God is. And what God has done for you in your life and your family. And uh, because we all have a testimony. We all have a testimony. And I mean, we're all here tonight. We're breathing. We're the Lord woke us up this morning and started us on his way, uh, on our way. And and he didn't have to do that, but he did. And um, And so I encourage all of you to to think about this message and to ask the Lord for more passion uh, for him. That when you get up in the morning, it's not 
You're not thinking about anything uh, except how can I how can I fellowship with the Lord? And um, and well, so why don't you pray for all of us, Sherry? Yes, Father, right now I pray for every single person listening to this to this uh, uh, video. Lord, that you will touch our hearts and that you will set us on fire, that you will give us that burning desire and passion to be with you, to think about you, to, to do uh, the righteous acts and assignments that you give us, Lord, uh, that we will not complain, Lord, we will not worry, Lord, we will not take uh, the cares of this world upon ourselves, Lord, but we will, we will do what you're calling us to do. And Lord, I pray over each one that's listening, obedience, Lord, that they will obey uh, what you have for them to do each and every day, Lord, that you give them something to do uh, that will advance your kingdom, that will bring your kingdom forth uh, in the name of Jesus. And I impart into this group fire. Yes, I impart yes, fire into them. I impart action into them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Set them on fire Amen. for you, Lord, Amen. that they want to talk about you. They want to think about you. They want to be with you in the name of Jesus. Let it be in Jesus' name.